little oh. faster. Come on, guys. Come on. No, leaves. You stay keeping down there. Okay. You call them all to you. Puppies, come here, puppies. Come on, come on, come on, puppies. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on, puppies. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, little puppies. Come on, come on, come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on. Give them to me. Let them all smell it and then drop it. And then stand back. Make sure they all see it. Drop it. Take the other ones over and put it in the mass. Take that one over and put them in there. Come on, puppy. Come on. Put them all in there so they can all see it. Come on, guys. Now you get out of there. Pick a puppy up and put it over by him. Put his nose right down there, just... I can't use him there. Uh, bring the meat down again? Uh, you won't be able to get it down. Take him, take him down. He dropped the bone behind you there. So put him down and then. Come on, puppies. Come on. Come on, little puppies. Come on, guys. Give it to the littlest one.
Grab her and take her down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give it to the light-faced one. I'll show you which one. This one? Yeah, that one. You can get me at a distance here with these puppies around me. Quiet, Mousy. Ah, she bit me right in the forehead. Ooh. Already too tired. Pooped out puppies. Yeah. Little puppies. a litter of puppies. You have a limited period of time when you first get to the breeder to test the puppies. Normally, uh, depending upon uh, how warm it is out that day, five minutes to 15 minutes is the maximum amount of time you're going to have to spend with a puppy before they tire too much. So one of the things you should do right off the bat is ask the breeder how long it's been since the puppies have eaten. You're going to have to take that into consideration because if they've just eaten, they're going to be slower. Once you have determined that, you are going to want to separate off the sex that you're not interested in. If it's males uh, that you want, get all the females out of the pen. It makes your selection process that much easier. The litter can be tested for gun shyness before you actually get in with the puppies. If your breeder lives in an area that you can't fire a gun, take two pieces of two by four and use the old radio trick where you clap them together to give a simulated gunfire. Uh, oftentimes this is all you need. Now normally if there's any gun shyness in the litter I would not select a puppy from that litter. I just couldn't recommend it. I've never been involved with a German bloodline litter that was gun shy. I have had the unfortunate experience of owning an American bloodline dog that was gun shy and every time we had thunder, 
that dog would climb in the bathroom. It was a terrible thing to uh, be involved with. I would never do it again. When I approached the puppy pen, I looked for the litter to come charging out to the fence to greet me. I want to see them bouncing on the fence, barking or yapping with their tails wagging. If any of the puppies hang back and act timid in any way, I immediately disregard these puppies and cull them off for the ones that I'm going to select. Uh, another thing to watch for is the puppy that will hang back for a second while the other puppies charge the fence and then when he sees them up there he'll come up with the other puppies. I will cull that puppy off too because it's an indication of a small temperament problem. Then when I go in with the litter I want to see puppies that are swarming around my feet, chewing on my shoelaces, chewing on my pant legs, just very happy to see me, making it very difficult to walk. This is a sign of a, of a litter that's very free in the mind. We don't want to see any shyness when you go in with the puppies. Once I've been in with the puppies for a few minutes and I see that they've settled down, I'll drop a pan or I'll drop something that makes a noise. I want to try and startle them a little bit to see how quickly they recover from being startled. Uh, a puppy that has a real problem, a noise problem, it takes a long time to come back. It's not one that you can, should consider to be a police service dog or a personal protection dog. Next, I'm going to test the prey drive with the puppies in a tennis ball. I'll take a tennis ball and toss it for the puppy, but you have to be fair here. Puppies lack the eye coordination of an older dog, so you have to make sure that the toss is short and that the puppy sees the ball go. What we look for in an ideal puppy is one that will charge out grab the ball and return it to me. Uh, some puppies will go out and get the ball and then split with it. Uh, they'll consistently do that. They won't return it to the handler. Some puppies won't return the tennis ball at all. Uh, I prefer the puppy that's going to go out, pick up a ball, and bring it back to me. Now our next test is, is again uh, a test for the prey drive. I like to use a bath towel uh, or a gunny sack. In most cases a bath towel is easier on the puppy's mouth. Later in training we're going to move them onto a gunny sack. Uh, here we see if the puppies will play tug of war. Basically you have to stimulate their prey drive with the movement of the sack. Too much movement of your hand is going to draw attention to your arm and not the sack. When you get the puppies on I want to see a uh, quick uh, fight and then let the puppy have the sack and carry it off. Uh, the ideal reaction for the puppy is to carry it off and shake the head uh, as he kills his prey. That indicates a clear mind for the puppy. Some breeders feel that a puppy's bite, uh, in other words biting with a full mouth, uh, is an inherent instinct. I tend to agree with them. Uh, you also though have to give the puppy a little bit of benefit of the doubt. If the breeder hasn't done a lot of tug of war with the puppies, they may be lacking a little bit of technique and you'll see a puppy occasionally grab the tennis or the uh, sack with the front canines uh, and then other times get it with a full mouth bite and show a lot of drive. That's the important thing. Don't disqualify a puppy just because once or twice he grabs with the front of his mouth. But if it's a dog that consistently grabs with the front of the mouth, he's going to do that probably all of his life. One of the things that uh, you may occasionally run into is a puppy that bites with a full mouth bite and then locks up. He uh, doesn't try and shake, he doesn't try and pull it, uh, he just locks onto that uh, rag and stands there. Now, normally, and you don't see this often, but normally this is an indication of a dog that later on will be able to be trained to bite, but he's going to have some real serious problems with the out. I've seen it on several occasions with Malinois, uh, not very often with German Shepherds, but it's something to be aware of and, and don't let yourself get caught thinking that this is a great puppy because he latches on, he stands there, and you can't get that sack out of his mouth, and he doesn't try and fight you for it, because this is a bit of a temperament fault. Occasionally you're going to see a puppy that, that has a, a decent prey drive and, and you feel it has a decent defensive drive, but it has character problems. It's not very friendly towards humans. 
It's unforgiving in the pain sensitive tests. These are dogs that I would not consider. Uh, they're dogs that are going to be difficult to train and although you don't see them very often, it's not one that, that a beginner should ever consider to take and train as a, as a police service dog or as a personal protection dog. The next test that I'm going to do, uh, and by this time we've selected, uh, we've called this litter down to one or two puppies, is to see the reaction when I put the rest of the litter in a puppy pen and take the individual puppy that I'm looking at out about 15 to 20 feet away from the pen. I want to see a puppy that is more interested in playing with me than it is with its litter mates. Uh, this is an indication uh, of what that puppy is going to be like later on in obedience work. After, after checking the uh, puppy's interest in me, the next test that I'm going to do is, is a pain forgiveness test. Uh, I'll take a puppy and get down on the ground with him and, and get him comfortable with me. Once I see that the puppy is trying to keep my attention, I'll take his, his front paw and pinch it until he yelps, and then immediately let him go and observe his reaction. A puppy that takes off and runs away from you is not a puppy that's going to be a good obedience dog. When you give them a correction as an adult, they're not going to be forgiving. They're going to hold a grudge. The ideal reaction for a dog to be a police service dog is one that's going to show an aggressive response to the pain when you pinch him and then when you let him go he's going to immediately come back to you for attention and want to be petted and be friendly. That's the perfect response for a personal protection dog. Now people that would watch this video and only be interested in AKC obedience or obedience dogs they don't want to see this aggressive response, but that's not what you and I want in our dogs. The last thing that I'm going to do with the puppies is take the puppies that I'm seriously interested in totally away from the litter and try and put them in an environment, uh, a room or whatever, that they've not been in before, something that's totally new to them. I want to see if a puppy will go off and play by itself uh, if he pays attention to me or if he's overly concerned with this change of environment and freaks out a little bit and locks up. Uh, these puppies have become overly concerned, although they can later uh, have this worked out of them through socialization, it's much better to start with one that when you take him to a new place, he has absolutely no problems with where he goes and what he sees. I like to see a puppy that has some independence, that will move out away from me, and try and entertain himself. Once I've settled on one or two puppies, I'll take the individuals out of the pen and leave the rest of the litter mates in the pen, about 15 to 20 feet from the litter. Uh, we'll put the puppy down and then see if the puppy has more of an interest in, in being with me or going back and playing with its litter mates. Uh, normally eight, nine week old puppies that are good temperament will stay with you. Uh, puppies that have been uh, left with the litter until they're 12, 13 weeks old, will almost always go back to the litter.
it up and just go over the mound. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 